here to do a couple of things tonight. Um, firstly, I'm going to indulge myself by just banging on about uh, Bob Dylan because I love him, and if you don't, I'll fight you. Um, the other thing is I'm here to and I'm inspire kind of the professionals in the audience, which is all of us, I guess, too, that it's okay to be Bob. It's okay to go electric. And to explain, I'll just backtrack to early in Bob's career. He was a folk musician, acoustic guitar, harmonica, the whole thing. And he copied and he mimicked his heroes. He really didn't have much of a style of his own. He walked like his heroes. He talked like his heroes. He really wanted to be Woody Guthrie, essentially. But he moved to New York, released a few albums. And within a space of a few short years, he's the voice of his generation. Played live moments before Dr. King gave this very famous speech. But as he grew in sort of stature, he was on, there was sort of a tension, I guess, between Bob and his audience. And uh, July 25th, 1965, Newport Folk Festival, Bob leaves the acoustic guitar behind, goes on stage with Stratocaster, amplifier, big electric blues band behind him. It's noisy, it's definitely not folk music. The sound was terrible, apparently. But was he trying to commit career suicide? I, I find that that's a bit of a stretch. He obviously still wanted to be a professional musician, sell his records, perform for a living. I think it's, it's got to be more logical to say that he was, he was taking some kind of calculated risk. He, he wanted this to work. He wasn't being an idiot. B Dylan haters will, will probably disagree with me, but anyhow. Um, he obviously was sort of uh, sacrificing some kind of short-term benefit for a longer-term gain, obviously. And I think history has proved that he probably made the right move. A couple of months after the Newport Folk Festival fiasco and all the booing that went on in, the, in that show, he releases uh, Highway 61 Revisited, which is kind of a pretty awesome album in pretty much everyone's best album of all time's kind of list. So, and by the, end of, by the end of 1999, Time Magazine have him as, you know, top 100 people of the last century, that kind of thing. So I think it kind of did pay off for Dylan. I think... He, he had a plan and it worked for him. And I think we can, uh, we can derive something of this. And I, I guess it's time to kind of wrap up my uh, Bob Dylan fanboy indulgence and kind of move on to the point that I'm trying to make. Bob's an artist, so he can do what he likes. He can just change direction on a whim. As a professional, a designer, a programmer, an architect, I don't, you know, that kind of thing, you have a client, you have a brief, you've got to keep people happy. You can't just... Uh, do whatever you want, but my point is, I think it's okay to go electric. It's okay to look your client in the eye and maybe even be prepared to lose them over something that you think is important, something, a, a new direction that you, you think they need to go in. It's, it's, it's okay to do this. There's a few kind of rules though. Like I said, an artist can do what they like. We've got a few more constraints around us. The rules are kind of sort of sketch out are that be polite and choose your battles wisely. Even Bob, and I'll go back to Bob, even Bob had released an album prior to Highway 61, it was called Bringing It All Back Home, and it had a few songs on it that were electric. He'd kind of announced to his fans that something was about to happen. The other rule for us is there's give and there's take. Um, after all the booing at Newport Folk Festival, Bob leaves the stage, comes back with his acoustic guitar, plays a few of the old tunes. You know, keeps people happy, there's, there's give and there's take. I think the biggest fear for all of us is that we might fail miserably. The client might give us the flick. Um, the best way to ensure that you don't fail miserably is just to be right. Have a track record of making hard calls and being right about it. Look, I think if you want to uh, just have a nice quiet life with very few challenges, don't do anything. Just keep your acoustic guitar and your harmonica, stay a folk musician, don't... Uh, don't change anything. You'll, you'll have a great job and you know, you'll, you'll, you'll go home at night fine. But I, I believe that if you do think your skills are worth a client paying decent money for, you really don't have much choice. At some point you will meet that, that tension where you need to go electric. If you really, I believe, if you want to sleep at night and um, you know, know that what you do is world class, even if no one knows you outside of Brisbane or wherever it is that you live, I, I just believe you, you've got no choice. You, you have to make those hard choices and, and go electric. So I'm just to wrap it up to encourage you next time you're in a meeting and you really think that things need to be different, I think you get your uh, Fender Stratocaster, tune it up, plug it into a dirty great big amplifier and uh, just 
look your client, or maybe your boss, that'll even be harder, look your client in the eye and um, just go electric. Thank you.